Robert Poole. Uh, today I want to talk to you about one of the biggest problems we face as small business owners, and particularly right now in this economy, and that's hiring and finding the right people and, and keeping the right people. And there's really four aspects to it, the hiring process, and today I'm going to talk about uh, the first step in the process. But, you know, why is um, hiring the right people so important, you know, other than the obvious? Well, you know, of course it's expensive. Um, you know, it's going to cost at least, you know, somebody's annual salary, you know, by the time you start, even if you fire them six months afterwards, uh, you know, uh, annual salary is probably a good proxy for that uh, because you got your salary, you got taxes paid, you've got benefits, you've got, you know, things that even hidden things like, uh, you know, unemployment uh, hits, you know, your unemployment rate, uh, tax rate goes up, you know, depending on you know, the turnover you have. Uh, Things like that, things that, you know, computer software licenses. So all things you don't think about, but when you add it all up, you know, it, typically I've found it's about, you know, in the annual salary of that person. So, you know, if you have a, let's say a person who's, you know, $50,000 on, on average, you know, their salary or whatever, it's like, man, just a hiring mistake at $50,000. It's like, boy, that, that hurts for a small business. So I'm going to talk to you about some things that um, have really helped us over the years and has made some, some big strides in the last few years. We have a very long in longevity for our employees and the team here. Uh, and it's because of these things that we, we've implemented. And it's not just theory. So these things actually work. So, um, you know, so, um, you know, besides the expense, you know, one of the biggest things for me in business anyway, one of the stressors is not just hiring, but firing. And so uh, firing is a direct result of poor hiring generally. Um, you know, you can't win every time, but, uh, you know, the, the least we can do as far as having to terminate somebody, the least amount of stress in our life, you know, so uh, just like we always, you know, I know about you, but, um, I, you know, I tend to avoid hiring because that's such a long and painful process. So we really want to get it right. So again, you know, there's really, um, we've broken it down to four steps and a lot of this is based upon a book I read, you know, quite a few years ago that really changed the way we did things, you know. I came from the school of hiring of get anybody who would show up to come in for an interview, you know, um, and that was before, you know, Zoom and things like that. Um, so if somebody would come in and it was the typical, hey, you know, how's it going? You know, oh, you found the place. Great. You know, um, oh, so, you know, what about the weather? And, you know, are you into sports? You know, chit chat, whatever. And that's about how the interviews went. So um, we're going to talk about a process that will actually that's really effective. So today I want to talk to you about um, and it doesn't sound that exciting, but um, it's really defining, and it's not just job description, it's finding the profile of the person you're looking for and very specifically what you're expecting them to do. Uh, and if we don't get this right, we're wasting an enormous amount of time and that's how we end up hiring the wrong people because we don't have a clear understanding of what we're hiring for, who we're looking for, and we hire the person with the wrong skill set and the wrong ideas uh, and for all those bad reasons we talked about. Uh, so let's talk about the, you know, so let, let me review the first of the four steps. So the, the first step is, is, like I said, we're defining the profile. We'll talk about this today. Uh, um, the second part is sourcing, basically finding um, potential candidates. And then, uh, of course, we've got the, um, you know, sort of a screening process uh, to screen out those, you know, go through, you know, the resumes, all that good stuff. Um, for the interview process, whether that's, you know, over the phone, in a person, you know, uh, Zoom, whatever. Uh, and then find, or finally, is sort of the double check reference thing. And, um, you know, that's something we'll talk about quite a bit because I've personally made that mistake a lot of times and it doesn't sound important, but boy, is it. Um, so today, again, we're going to talk about defining. Um, and that's, um, you know, in that book I mentioned, Who, and I think uh, the author's, Jeffrey Smart and um, uh, with a G and I forgot, unfortunately I forgot the other author's name, but um, these guys are, are real pros at recruiting at the Fortune 500 level. Um, but I took some of their concepts and I kind of tweaked them a little bit for a small business and what we do, and it's really been effective. So they talked about this idea of developing a scorecard, um, and it's basically that profile that what people think of as a job description, if you will. Um, but it's very, very specific, and if we can match that scorecard, it allows us to evaluate candidates that come in and say, do they meet everything on this scorecard? Um, you know, what score out of, a, you know, 100 or whatever can we give them based upon these are the things we're looking for on the scorecard, 
these are the things they got, you know, are they close enough fit, you know, for us to consider moving through the process. So, um, you know, and again, it has to be extremely specific, but, uh, and it's all based upon um, what you would call outcomes um, or results, basically, is probably the, the best way to put it. Um, because if we're hiring for uh, results, then it's much easier uh, to, for the person that's being hired to know what they're expected of um, versus an activity, because an activity doesn't translate into a result. So what we want to do is tailor that outcome uh, to uh, fit the, the sort of the mission of our company. So if our company is trying to do X, Y, Z, um, you know, improve the lives of our customers by solving this problem for them, the question is, how does this position support that? What is that? What is this position doing? Um, and who are we looking for? And how are they going to contribute? Because if it's not supporting that and contributing to that larger mission as a company, uh, then we're off base on that. Um, so we want to go through and, and come up with very specific things, as I said, um, that are going to help support that mission. And you know, the the cool thing about it is that you know the the quote A players, the overachievers, basically the people that we all want to hire, um, those types that are just you know they show up early, go home late, and you know are, they don't screw around and they're ready to go. You know very smart and you know good at what they do those are the people that we want and those people are goal driven they are outcome result driven they want to know what's expected of them you know they're they're begging for tell me what you expect me to do so i can achieve that goal um versus you know the sort of the b and c players if you will people who are you know just looking for a job where they can get a paycheck you know that's a different story they actually don't want to have all that specific information because guess what they can tell pretty easily and everyone else can can tell if they're doing a good job or not because we've got very specific outcomes very specific results we're looking for so you know um so on this the scorecard idea the best thing to do is to create you know um, and it depends on your situation but i would say five to seven sort of outcomes or results that you're expecting of this person you know let's say you're um hiring somebody who's going to be in business development or sales or whatever uh, you know, something, you know, you might put on the scorecard, um, person uh, or candidate will um, uh, increase sales from $1 million of XYZ product to $2 million within 12 months. That's a very specific goal. That's a very specific result that we're expecting that person to do. That person walks in, they know exactly what they got to do. And they know if they're succeeding in it or they know if they're failing in it. Uh, and again, the B and C players will look at that and go, oh, geez, you know, I'm going to be responsible. I can't just show up and, you know, make some calls and expect to get a paycheck. Um, whereas the A players will go, awesome, great. You know, I know I know exactly what I got to do. I can't wait to get out there and get started on it. So that's why we want very specific outcomes um, that we can use. So you want to come up with, you know, things that are, again, a result and not an activity uh, because an activity may cause a result but we want to focus on the result not the activity because we're not paying people for an activity we're paying for what they can do a result that they're going to add to that overall mission of the company um you know so you know there's other benefits to focusing on results and outcomes too you know think about it you know in the past remote work was not real common i mean there were some but you know with of course with COVID and everything the last two years now remote work is very, very common. And, you know, although big companies are trying to get people to come back to the office, people have gotten used to the whole remote thing. And so they're bigoted. But it also makes it easier on us as employers because we can hire somebody that lives, you know, um, you know, three different time zones away from us. Um, and they can be just as effective as somebody right here in our office. But, you know, how do you do that? Well, of course, you got to build trust that they're doing what they're supposed to do. You know, um, and so you can do that two ways. You can micromanage them. You know, there's computer programs that will, you know, literally install on a computer and they'll track every mouse click and all that kind of stuff and micromanage somebody to make sure they're doing the activity that, that they're supposed to be doing. But again, um, you know, who wants to do that? Who wants to be the, the micromanager, you know? And so if, we, if we're not tracking activity, but we're tracking results, you know, what does it matter what they're doing if they're getting the results? If that person can change uh, sales, take it from a million to two million, you know, who cares if they're working three hours a day as long as they do it? Um, you know, so again, that's the benefit of making this profile fit for certain outcomes, you know. Um, and it doesn't, you know, sales is an easy example, but, you know, let's say it's administrative or technical. 
you know, you can still have goals and, you know, t take, you know, if you're an administrative person, you know, um, create a process that does X, Y, and Z by first quarter uh, of next year or whatever, you know. Um, so that you can, it takes a little effort, it takes some time to think about it, but you can always come up with specific results that you need that person, that position to provide the company to support its mission. So, um, you know, so we don't have to micromanage them and we can evaluate people very easily. And again, they can see where they're at. Uh, you can see where they're at. Everybody can see where they're at, if they're achieving their goals, if they're doing a good job, because, you know, top producers, top A players will want to know that, you know, they want to know hey, am I doing a good job? You know, the other people don't care. They just want a paycheck, but that's what we're looking for. And so it kind of filters out the wrong people and attracts the right people. Um, so, and it, you know, keeps everybody on the same page. So there's no confusion about, hey, what am I supposed to be doing? You know, and the boss knows what they're supposed to be doing. They know what they're supposed to be doing. Everybody knows what they're supposed to be doing because again, very specific results. So focus on creating that, that outcome, that list of, you know, results, I said, a good number, you know, typically it's five to seven, you know, we're going to overwhelm them. Work on the wording. Make sure it's very specific that somebody from the outside could come in and go, okay, I can see what I'm supposed to be doing here. Um, and then, you know, as you go through the process, you'll be able to say, yeah, this person doesn't fit. And we'll talk about this, you know, in the interview process and the screening process, how you match those two up. But, you know, if they don't match that scorecard of what we're looking for and they haven't proven that they can do those or come up with those results for others, that's a big red flag that, you know, tells us basically that's the wrong person for the job. So again, this takes a little effort, uh, like most things in life. Um, and, um, you know, but it, it really pays dividends and it makes a huge difference um, in what we can get out of our employees and our team and, you know, and avoiding the hassle, like I said, of the wrong hire, the expensive, you know, um, hassle of um, making mistakes on hiring. And this can really cut down and make sure you're attracting the, the right people uh, and keeping the right people in your company. So again, this is um, the first um, a day of this. And we'll talk about um, some the future steps to this. So uh, please, uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. Hit that, that bell and uh, share the, the video with some other people and throw some comments in there. We'll be happy to, to um, uh, go back and forth with you on that stuff. Uh, feedback, good or bad. And uh, appreciate your time. And I'll see you on the next video.